Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. We'll just give it a, a quick moment here to, uh, for folks to come in. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Mata Polywal with the Orange County Water District. In honor of National Water Quality Month, I'm excited to welcome you to our August webinar putting California's water quality to the test. So just wanna mention a few things before we begin. Uh, as we are in webinar mode, attendees are muted. However, we encourage you to submit any questions or comments in the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and it will be available on the OCWD website and YouTube channel. For today's program, I'll introduce our speakers, we'll hear their presentations, and we'll have a Q&A at the end. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. Ashley Doomer is a Senior Water Resources Control Engineer Regulation Specialist with the Technical Operations Section. Ashley started with the Division of Drinking Water in 2009, and she has worked for four different field offices across Southern California before joining the Technical Operations Section. She is a licensed civil engineer and a grade two treatment and distribution operator. Patrick Brasillis is the Director of Water Quality at the Orange County Water District, where he manages the groundwater compliance, monitoring report and reporting for over 200 drinking water wells used by the district's 19 cities and water districts. Pat's responsibilities include oversight and implementation of many proactive, diverse, and comprehensive surface and groundwater monitoring programs focused on regulatory and non-regulatory activities that provide valuable information in ambient conditions of source waters and assessing groundwater protection. And Hajin Lee is the Director of Public Works with the City of Fountain Valley where she oversees the Water Division's production, distribution, and quality programs. Hajin is passionate about drinking water and the impact it has to enhance quality of life for residents and help businesses thrive. She looks forward to working with less developed areas to help bring fresh, water, fresh drinking water to foster a healthy community through relationship building and collaboration. So I will now turn it over to Ashley to kick off our presentations for today. So today I'll be covering water quality oversight and regulation. Next slide. So the Safe Drinking Water Act actually gives us the authority to regulate public water systems. This authority was granted to us by Congress in 1974, and it actually was delegated to EPA to authorize the drinking water program but EPA can delegate the authority to the states as long as we have the same level of protection as the federal government. Since the inception of the Safe Drinking Water Act, California has operated the drinking water program, and we do actually have more stringent water quality standards than federal EPA. Next slide. So currently the drinking water program is housed under the State Water Resources Control Board and is referred to as the Division of Drinking Water. Although if you've been around drinking water for a long time, you may have previously known that we were housed in the California Department of Health and Human Services and the California Department of Public Health. From the diagram, you can see that we do have some other divisions within the State Water Board, 
such as the Division of Water Quality and the nine regional water quality control boards. Today, I will be focusing on the Division of Drinking Water as we're responsible for the water quality for drinking water and the other divisions are more responsible for different environmental protections. Next slide. So looking at the Division of Drinking Water, we do currently have four branches. So two field branches for the Northern and Southern California. We have our newest branch, which is the Resiliency and Data Branch and our Program Management Branch. And although we are headquartered in Sacramento, we actually are located across the state. Next slide. So starting with our field operations branch, if you're a water system, these are likely the people who you're interacting with all the time. So we do have five sections within the two different branches, and then there's actually 24 different district offices located throughout California. The district offices are the uh, folks responsible for enforcement and regulatory oversight of the approximately 7,500 public water systems located across the state. These are the people performing field inspections, issuing operating permits, reviewing plans and specs for new facilities, and taking enforcement action for non-compliance. Next slide. Now, similar to how EPA can delegate the authority to the state water board, we can actually delegate some of our authority to counties. And we do this through what we refer to as our local primacy agencies or LPAs. And these folks are responsible for uh, regulating public water systems serving less than 200 service connections. And you can see from the map, um, the ones in blue actually have or have an LPA system, and the ones in gray do not. So it, it's kind of up to the county whether they want to have the program or not. And we are actually in the process of transitioning a few of the LPAs back to us. Next slide. So our safer section is really focused on trying to come up with sustainable solutions for Californians who currently lack safe, adequate, and affordable drinking water. So they're really focused on consolidation and some other aspects similar to that. Next slide. Our quality assurance section supports the field offices and our LPA for compliance decision and enforcement actions. And all of those decisions are really based on water quality data. And so the quality assurance section helps us develop tools that the field office offices use to review and make those compliance determinations. Next slide. So one of the unique things that's within the Division of Drinking Water is actually our ELAP section. And ELAP provides an evaluation and accreditation to all environmental testing laboratories to ensure the quality of analytical data used for regulatory processes. So they do this for labs for drinking water, wastewater, shellfish, food, and hazardous waste. And the Division of Drinking Water does require that public water systems use ELAP certified laboratories to conduct their water quality. Next slide. And then finally, we have the technical operations section. And this section is really designated to help provide technical support to our field offices. We also develop regulations and house the recycled water unit, which works with not only the field offices, but also the regional boards on recycled water projects. Next slide. So I think a lot of water systems are very aware that they are constantly submitting water quality data to us. And there's a few different ways that they're actually submitting the data to us. We get monthly reports, which is a report that the water system fills out on a monthly basis and then submits to us. And then we get some data electronically. So you might wonder if you're a water system, what actually happens to these monthly reports or water quality results when they come to us? Well, we do review them to ensure that the correct number of samples have been collected at the right time and um, certain things have um, 
location requirements that they need to be sampled at the correct location. And so we look at that and we do log some of that information and can keep track of that over time and making sure that the water system is in compliance with those requirements. Next slide. So the other way that we get data is through just electronic submittal from the laboratory they directly send it into our database. And we actually have an internal program that we use that we refer to as W3IR, and we can look at the data in there and also run reports to figure out, are the samples being collected? Are any of the results exceeding a trigger or an MCL? And so we can make sure that those are being followed up with and appropriate actions are being taken in um, regards to whatever the samples are. Or even if samples are not being taken, we get notifications on that to make sure that we're following up to see if it just didn't get submitted to us or if the sample wasn't taken. Oh, next slide. So we are always working on developing new regulations and some of our newest effective regulations are the chlorate DLR, the revised total coliform rule, and some ELAP regulations. And there are some details on the slides, but um, we're not gonna go over that in too much detail. So next slide. So we're always trying to be at the cutting edge of what's coming up for drinking water quality and understanding what's going on. And so we are also in the process of working on future regulations. And so we have a handful of future regulations that we are actually currently in the process of working on and developing. So these will be kind of near coming in the future. Next slide. So currently most of the state is under drought and uh, there has been emergency curtailments issued for the Delta, which will have some impacts. And then because of that, we're, we're issuing monitoring orders to monitor drought impacts to water systems that we think are gonna be likely impacted to drought. Next slide. So we do have our REARGIS program, which is kind of a very unique program um, that we're currently in the process of. And while this doesn't exactly deal with water quality, it is really important. And we're providing almost a billion dollars in unpaid bills for both community water systems and wastewater systems. A survey went out on August 11th and it'll close on September 10th. And we are asking that all community water systems participate in the survey, even if you haven't been financially impacted due to COVID, because that'll help us determine the actual need of for the rest of the water systems. Next slide. So the California Laboratory Intake Portal is actually our new way of intaking water quality results. And so while this changes the form that the laboratory submits the file and where the information is stored on our end, it doesn't really change anything on how the district offices are reviewing the water quality data. And so if you're familiar with WQM or uh, Lab to State, we have actually shut those down. And starting September 1st, we will be launching the CLIP portal and that'll allow laboratories to submit data via CLIP rather to either WQM or Lab to State as was previously done. So next slide. So one of the things that this Division of Drinking Water does is we have to uh, do a report to the legislation once every five years. And this does look at California's water quality as a whole and provides a bunch of recommendations on things that can be taken to improve water quality. And so we are in the process of getting this plan approved. And if um, on September 21st board meeting, we will be going to the board with this item. And next slide. And 
PFOS has definitely been, I think, on everyone's mind. And we have issued monitoring orders and will continue to do investigative monitoring on areas where we expect to find PFOS. And with that, that is the end of my presentation, and I will turn it over to Pat. Hey, good morning. My name is Patrick Rich Lewis. I'm the Director of Water Quality for the Orange County Water District. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the various aspects of water quality monitoring here at the Orange County Water District. Next presentation, we'll discuss a little bit about what the Orange County Water District is and what we do, and then go into the various water quality monitoring programs, things like the drinking water monitoring, groundwater monitoring, surface water monitoring and treatment facility monitoring. In addition, we'll talk a little bit about all the coordination that goes into accomplishing those many monitoring programs. Okay. So the Orange County Water District. Orange County Water District was formed back in 1933 by the California State Legislature to protect and manage the Orange County groundwater basin. We also protect the rights to the San and river water here in Orange County. The basin serves 19 large municipal and special water districts that serve over two and a half million people here in North and Central Orange County. That basin currently provides up to 77% of the water supply for those residents in North and Central Orange County. The map on the right actually shows some of those large producers, those water systems that pump water from the groundwater basin. Next slide. This image just shows the Santa Ana River watershed. Now you can see at the bottom left of the screen is the Orange County Water District. That black line dictates the boundaries of the water district. And the water district's groundwater basin that I'll talk a little bit more about is in that area where the Santa Ana River runs right through the middle of that area. The upper watershed obviously drains right through and Orange County is downstream of that entire watershed. Next slide. This is an image of the groundwater basin showing the various levels. Uh, there, are, there are obviously different levels, geologic formations in the groundwater basin. You see the tan areas are those silt and clay. Those are areas that don't hold water and don't allow water to percolate down into deeper into the groundwater basin. Those blue areas are more the sand and gravels. It's what we call aquifers that hold the water that can be pulled from the ground and used for drinking water. Now on the right side of the image, you can see Anaheim, where there's the mountains. So that area actually has less of those clays and silt, which allows water to percolate and replenish down into the groundwater basin. On the right side, you can actually see the Pacific Ocean. Now in that area, the Orange County Water District has been working to curtail seawater intrusion, where seawater can make its way into the groundwater basin and add salts and other minerals into the water, making it unusable. So the Orange County Water District has operated a seawater intrusion barrier there for many decades to prevent that seawater getting into the groundwater. Next slide. So mentioning that area up in Anaheim where the Orange County Water District has many of our recharge basins. We also operate a portion of the San Juan River Channel for recharging the groundwater basin. Uh, there are over 25 basins with 1,000 acres of area for replenishing the groundwater basin. Various water sources used in that area include our G to breast water, which I'll discuss in a little more detail. Groundwater replenishment system is a recycled water system that provides quite a bit of water to help replenish the groundwater basin. In addition, we have the San Ana River water coming down the San Ana River that can be diverted and used to replenish the groundwater basin. We also purchase imported water from Northern California up in that Sacramento River, Sacramento Delta area. Also, there's Colorado River water that can be purchased and used to replenish the groundwater basin. Next slide. This pie chart just helps to show those many different sources of water that are used to replenish the groundwater basin. Starting at the top left, we have the imported water I mentioned that can be purchased from the imported water wholesaler, the Metropolitan Water District, and used to replenish the groundwater basin. Going clockwise, we have natural recharge that's consistently replenishing the groundwater basin as we have water sources sinking into the ground. 
There's also the base flow of the San Juan River, water that's consistently coming down the river that can be used to replenish the groundwater basin as well. And even on occasion, we do get rainfall and storms. And when that happens, that can be quite a bit of water. And that water can be hopefully diverted and caught to use to replenish the groundwater basin as well. And then the largest portion of that pipe chart is recycled water. That's that water that's generated from the groundwater replenishment system. And that can be up to 30% of that water that's replenished in the groundwater basin on a regular basis. Next slide. So talking about the DWRS, the groundwater replenishment system, that is an advanced wastewater purification process that's been in operation since 2008. Uh, it's a joint project between, between the Orange County Sanitation District, OOC San, and the Orange County Water District. We receive the wastewater from, from the Orange County Sanitation District and then treat it here at the Orange County Water District using three main processes to purify that water. We have our microfiltration, reverse osmosis, and then ultraviolet light with the addition of hydrogen peroxide. Once that water has been purified, it's sent out to our seawater intrusion barrier, which I've mentioned previously, also to our mid-basin injection, an area in Santa Ana where we're injecting water into the groundwater basin as well. We also have those recharge basins in Anaheim where that water can be sent percolate into the groundwater basin. Next slide. This image just shows where that water is coming from, those green boxes at the bottom are those wastewater treatment facilities where water can be sent over to that blue square at the bottom of the screen. That's our GWS facility. The blue line that leads right through the middle of the image, that's our 13 mile pipeline that takes that water up to the recharge basins of Anaheim and also helps distribute it over to our mid basin in Santa Ana or even to our Calvert Bear injection wells here in Fountain Valley and in Huntington Beach. Next slide. This has a lot of writing, but some of the key points in this slide are just the numbers. So speaking about water quality is what we're talking about today. Those first numbers, our operation staff collect daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, many samples throughout the year. These are numbers for 2020. And our operation staff collected over 3,800 samples in 2020, which equated to over 36,000 different analytical results. In addition, our water quality department also performs monitoring on the treatment facility, as well as at groundwater wells throughout the groundwater basin where the GVS water is being, either being injected or recharged. The water quality department collected over 4,000 additional samples with over 81,000 additional analytic results generated. So just looking at for the GWS program and the GWS facility, we're talking almost 8,000 samples that were collected with over 118,000 separate analytical results that were used to assess the water quality just in 2020 for that GWS system. This is all in addition to the continuing control activities by our operations staff, in addition to other inline water quality monitoring instrumentation that's used on a continuous basis. Next slide. So as I mentioned, our operations department is key for especially for that GWS system, but there's lots of other departments that are involved in these various programs, projects, and activities for water quality monitoring here at Orange County Water District. Our water quality department is obviously a key and pivotal department that helps to coordinate and complete a lot of these activities, but we also work very closely with our laboratory, research and development department, planning and watershed management department, our hydrogeology department, engineering, the operations, and also that regulatory affairs department. All, we all work together to accomplish our water quality goals. Next slide. Now I mentioned the laboratory. Our Orange County Water District Laboratory, the Philip L. Anthony Water Quality Laboratory, is a state certified laboratory certified by ELAP, as Ashley mentioned, which is the Environmental Laboratory Accreditation Program. The lab is accredited in multiple types of methods and analytical testing, whether it be organic, inorganic, or even microbial testing. We have a large 39,000 square foot facility housing many different analytical laboratories, as well as the offices for our laboratory and our water quality department. Next slide. This slide shows a very large graph there on the right, kind of breaking down all the different sample collection that's occurred. This is just for our water quality department alone. And as you can see, going back many years, we've had many years of sampling that's occurred, maybe tens, 
of thousands of samples that are collected many in many years, especially in that 2008 when the view breast came online. If you look at the slide, go ahead and go to the next. You can see in 2020 alone, which was actually a more difficult year to accomplish some of our goals, we collected over 15,000 samples with over 368,000 separate analytical results that were collected, reviewed, and reported. Now, this takes a lot of balancing of the water quality sample workload, deciding sample collection, whether it be regulatory or even non regulatory and voluntary sampling, which there's quite a bit here at the Orange County Water District to protect the groundwater basin and those water sources. Uh, we also work to ensure quality assurance, also review, and then report those, those results to the various agencies, water districts, uh, for various reporting requirements. Next slide. Another way to look at the sample collection, this is just showing those numbers broken down by the various types of sample collected, whether it be biological or microbial sampling, including that total coliform or coli sampling or organic sampling or inorganic sampling or even radiological sampling. This is how it's all broken down. These are all the many different types of samples that have to be collected, whether it's required for various required drinking water monitoring or even voluntary monitoring that's performed on constituents of emerging, emerging concerns, which we call PECs, which are also an additional water quality monitoring aspect to many of our programs. Next slide. As far as drinking water monitoring, the Orange County Water District works very closely with all those 19 large uh, water agencies, as well as some small water agencies, to ensure that they're meeting their water quality drinking, drinking water quality requirements. Um, there are over 200 wells in the basin uh, that are owned and operated by those producers, those systems that are pumping groundwater to meet various MCLs. There's lots of samples that are collected for primary MCLs, secondary MCLs, uh, various monitoring orders, as Ashley mentioned, those PFAS monitoring orders, as well as requirements by US EPA, such as the Unregulated Contaminant Monitoring Order, UCMR. It's another large program that's required for many of these producers to testing their wells and testing their sources. Next slide. This map on the right shows a lot of those red dots. Those are all the large producer wells, along with the blue dots showing the smaller system drinking water wells. Now we have those 19 large producers that have, operate 20 water systems. Uh, there, there are about 213 wells currently owned and operated by those large producers. We also have the small water systems, there's about 10 systems operating about 12 wells. So within the boundaries of the Orange County Water District, we are working with over 30 water systems that have about 225 wells that they own and operate currently. Next slide. And as I mentioned previously, those wells are used to provide up to 77% of the drinking water supply for those systems. And as you'll hear from Hey, Jim, and a little bit later, it can even exceed that 77% at times. Next slide. This is just a list of all the different producers that we work closely with to meet those drinking water requirements, such as City of Anaheim, Huntington Beach, East Orange County Water District, Irvine Ranch, or even the Orlando Water District. Next slide. As far as groundwater monitoring, this is a large portion of what it is that we need to do to ensure and protect the groundwater basin for all those producers. We have various programs, whether it be the coastal groundwater monitoring, our north basin monitoring, which is up northern part of our basin in Fullerton, Anaheim. Uh, also, we have the south basin, which we, it's kind of more southern central part of the basin, as part of Santa Ana and Irvine region. Uh, we also have specific monitoring for a sub part of our basin down there, El Toro and Irvine, where the El Toro and Port Air Station. And all in all, in all these different programs, there are over 700 different monitoring wells. They have different types of qualities, such as being a single casing or nested well casing, or even special west bay casings that I'll describe in a little more detail. Next slide. This is just a map. All those purple dots are various monitoring wells. So you can see at the bottom right, that's our El Toro area, which is a separate subbasin, the Irvine subbasin, that we do monitoring in that area. To the bottom left and up to the left side of that map, you can see those are all those wells located along the coast where we're helping to monitor the seawater intrusion 
and other aspects of that part of the basement. Up to the top of the slide, you can see a lot of groupings of those north basin wells. We're monitoring the north basin. So this just helps to show, and you can see the images on the right, those groups of wells are what we call nested wells, which that I'll talk about further. Next slide. So the first type of well is a single point well. So you have one well drilled, which is pretty much a pipe drilled down to specific depths with a screened area that can allow water to enter that well so we can pump it out and test it. So this can test different parts of those aquifer regions located deep into the groundwater basin. Another type of well that we have is what I mentioned, the nested well. So there could be multiple well casings or pipes drilled into the ground to allow us to test different depths in one location. So next, we actually can dip, you know, drill down to different depths into the groundwater basin to test the various groundwater at different depths into the ground. Uh, another thing that we do when we have a well that is drilled next is that we can install what we call dedicated pumps, pumps that are installed in the well and sealed. So it provides a very high quality type of water quality monitoring um, capability that we can pump that groundwater consistently from the same depth and get key you know, water quality characteristics of that groundwater. Next slide. These are just a few pictures of various sites uh, where we perform groundwater monitoring at groundwater well locations. They can be located in the street next to military installations next to storm channels uh, in the street where it requires traffic control. We use various types of equipment, whether it be pumping reels, or as I mentioned, the dedicated pumps that are installed in the wells as well. Next slide. Part of our groundwater monitoring is we are investigating certain areas and developing new plume maps where, where we are working with various regulatory agencies, such as US EPA in our North Basin area, and that area working with the US EPA has actually been uh, signified as a super fun area for parts of that basin. So it can be remediated and cleaned up. We're also working in the South Basin area as well for areas to determine where there may be water quality concerns so we can address them and clean those up as well. Next slide. One specific type of well I mentioned was the West Bay well. This is a very specific well that's one drilled casing that's drilled a pipe that's drilled very deep up some upwards of or downwards of about 2,000 feet deep in some cases uh, that has specific areas that can be uh, packered off as they say those blue on the left on the right side you can see those blue things those are called packers those actually help to isolate specific areas so we can collect water samples from specific areas deep into the ground we have over 55 of these wells and there's over 550 different ports or sites in discrete sites that we can collect our quality monitoring at uh, throughout the basin at all those blue dots on the map. Next slide. Another type of monitoring we perform throughout the groundwater basin and in the upper watershed for the San Ana River is surface water monitoring. So we will collect samples from the San Ana River, a lot of those recharge lakes and recharge basins that we have. We also test the tributaries, various creeks and small rivers that feed into the San Ana River. Uh, in addition, when storm, storms occur, we do stormwater monitoring of stormwater channels and in the San Ana River to assess how those storms may affect the water quality in the river itself. In addition, we do test the imported water that is purchased and replenished through the groundwater basin as well. Next slide. These are just a few photos you can see on the top left, storm channel monitoring, or on the right side, the San Ana River and other tributary monitoring as well. And at the bottom left, you can even see that we have even gone up to those headwaters up into the San Bernardino Mountains. They even test the water, even when there's snow on the ground, uh, to get a better idea of what the water looks like up where the headworks of a certain creek or river may start. Next slide. Now I mentioned treatment facility monitoring. Uh, I went into a little more detail with the groundwater replenishment system, which is an indirect potable uh, recycled water system. Uh, that is obviously one of our more critical water quality monitoring efforts. In addition, we do test wastewater treatment facilities, some of those facilities for the Orange County Sanitation District, we do testing at, in addition to other wastewater facilities in the upper watershed of the San Ana River. Uh, other treatment facilities that have come into play in more recent years are those PFAS treatment facilities. Uh, the Orange County Water District is currently operating a pilot 
PFAS treatment facility, our water quality department and research department are working very closely to maintain water quality monitoring on that system. This is now in its phase two. And then we also have full scale treatment facilities that are being built at certain affected wells in the groundwater basin. We have one in Fullerton that's already been constructed and is in operation and several more for the Toronto Water District and in the York Linda Water District should be coming online later this year with many more to follow with certain areas that are impacted by PFAS. Next one. So all this water quality uh, monitoring takes a lot of coordination, a lot of cooperation. And the Orange County Water District has a lot of district departments that are involved in this, as well as working with a lot of other agencies and associations to accomplish and protect the Orange County's groundwater basin here. Now we work with the State Water Resources Control Board, the Regional Water Quality Control Board, the Department or the Division of Drinking Water with Ashley and a lot of her colleagues. We work with a lot of imported water agencies such as the Metropolitan Water District. Uh, we work closely with all those local water agencies, those producers we discussed, all those agencies that are pumping groundwater from the basin as well. We also work with uh, water associations such as Aqua, AWWA. Uh, we also work with other environmental consulting firms and higher consultants, consulting firms to help with various water quality monitoring projects. So it takes a lot of coordination, a lot of cooperation to accomplish and protect all of Orange County's groundwater. Next slide. And that is it. Thank you very much. And I welcome any questions at the end of the presentation. Next, we'll have Hai Jin from City of Fountain Valley. Hello, hi. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, my name is Hei Lee. I'm the Public Works Director for City of Fountain Valley. So let's get started. Um, next, please. All right. So uh, let me go over a little bit of our um, how our City of Fountain Valley operate. We are part of a bigger organization called Public Works, and Water Division is part of our Public Works operation. So as a part of our water division, we have uh, three major responsibilities. So we have water production. Those are our wells that pump water from Orange County uh, Water District groundwater basin. And we have water distribution. And the last leg that, I, that we are gonna be talking about today is the regulatory compliance and which addresses water quality. And the reason why I connected the Venn diagram is because we can't do one without the other. They are integral to our water system and how we deliver quality water to our customers. Okay, next. All right, so uh, I want to emphasize the fact that we do uh, serve 100% groundwater, uh, just as Patrick has alluded to. Um, our basin pumping percentage is 77, but uh, due to some of the other constraints in the uh, North County Basin and South County uh, Basin agencies, we are able to pump 100% groundwater. So let's go over uh, each of our uh, 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 facilities and what they do and how we deliver quality water. So we have well production, water production uh, team that has, well, we have well head treatment. That's basically the groundwater um, that we pump and it's a raw water that we treat them. And then we also had a wellhead sampling and testing. So we collect that water uh, before and after. And we also uh, transfer that water to our reservoirs for distribution. And the other side, I have water distribution. And on that program, we do routine distribution uh, samples, just as uh, I think Ashley discussed that. And we have hydro hydrant flushing program and backflow and cross connection program. So that kind of is the big overview of what we do in our water system. And next. All right, so let's go over each of those um, components one by one. So you know what we're doing on, um, on our source water quality. So this, uh, some of our photos indicate uh, the MIOX on site sodium hypochlorite generation. You see uh, a kind of a fancy equipment there, but that's what generates um, chlorine. And we generate chlorine from um, actually food grade salt. Uh, if you see the bottom right, you see the stack of brown bags. That's actually uh, food grade salt 
that we put in. And for those gigs out there, um, as you know, the table salt is um, sodium and chloride. So the myox should help separate the, um, the sodium Na from Cl and, chlorine, uh, and generate the chlorine. So uh, let's talk about wellhead treatment and disinfection. So we generate, as we discussed, sodium hypochlorite, which is essentially chlorine, and sodium fluoride, um, and general water quality and bacteriological uh, water quality samples. And once those water is uh, transferred, uh, conveyed to the reservoir, we also check for chlorine residuals and nitrate and nitrite. And the reason why we do that is make sure that um, during the conveyance of all this water, the water is still safe to drink. Okay, and next. All right, so we now, uh, let's talk about daily sampling and testing. So where do we do these daily samples uh, and testing? So all our wells are vis visited daily and also our import connection. I think uh, Patrick talked about uh, Metropolitan Water District as a um, surface water importer to uh, our region. So we have one connection uh, that supply us import water, which currently we're not using because we are actually using 100% groundwater. But we also check, check the water quality there. And we also uh, check water quality at select distribution locations. And those select distribution locations, they could rotate through. And what do we check there? So we check for chlorine and fluoride uh, resi residual levels. So we wanna make sure that uh, they are healthy all throughout the system. So um, a little photo on the bottom left, the tan color, that's one of our well. And you see um, the test port there. And uh, the picture in the middle is one of our staff checking for water quality at our reservoir too. And this is actually a very special one, which we don't get to um, experience very often. We're kind of blessed. We just went through a major um, uh, uh, reservoir booster station upgrade and we drained the reservoir and now we are filling. So he's actually checking uh, for the water quality as we're, we're filling the water on our reservoir. And the map on the right uh, shows um, how our wells and our reservoirs are located. So they're, they're spread throughout our city. Okay, next. So now let's talk about weekly sampling and testing. So we talked about distribution system and we have 30 distribution uh, system sample locations. And the map didn't come out as well, but there are, there are blue dots on the map and they're spread all throughout the city so that we could actually get a very um, uh, nice cross section of what the water quality is on all, all four, four corners of the city. And we check for bacteriological, we check for total coliform, E. coli, and HPC, which basically checks for general water quality and total chlorine levels. As we added, we add the chlorine um, at the wellhead and they get distributed. We wanna make sure there's some residual uh, to make sure that it's still, uh, it, the water is still sanitized. And the little photo that you see on the left, that's our sample station. You might actually see some of these on the front of your house, perhaps, because they are spread out all throughout the system. Um, and uh, each agency has a different cover, but it's essentially the same function. And that's uh, that the sample station is sanitized even before we take the sample. And we once we take the sample, we send those water quality sample to the lab. Because we, we are a smaller agency, we do not have our own water quality lab that's certified. So we send them to a lab um, that actually reports directly to the water board. And next. All right, so now let's move on to our monthly sampling and testing and reporting. So uh, where do we sample? We sample one location at a distribution system. Again, we wanna make sure that throughout the system, our water quality is sound. And what do we check? Uh, we check for fluoride split sample. We take one by our staff, and another, we, we, uh, another one we do have capability to sample those and come up with the results um, uh, in, in our lab um, at our yard. And another one is sent to the lab. We want to confirm and affirm that what we are doing is consistent with a, a qualified lab who's uh, doing the sample water quality sampling at a controlled uh, environment. And 
we do we do these samples at all three loca uh, 30 locations in our distribution system. And again, where what do we check for? We again check for uh, general physical quality of the water, temperature, pH levels, turbidity, uh, color, and odor. Um, and I think a lot of you uh, who sometimes complain about uh, water quality, it's not that water is not safe to drink. All the water that we convey to the tap is perfectly safe to drink. But one of the complaint might be perhaps odor. And um, sometimes when we mix our imported water with our uh, groundwater, uh, we have a different treatment process and um, imported water use chloramines and we use chlorine and drink those chemical uh, processes, there's some residuals, and that's what sometimes causes a little bit of water, but they're still a perfectly safe water to drink. Okay, and the, yeah, next, yeah, the one in the middle is actually uh, our water quality sample that we get directly from the lab, and you'll see that on the next slide as well. Okay, and then now let's move on to quarterly sampling and testing, and we also report those all the way to Division of Drinking Water. And on this, we actually take samples at eight distribution um, system locations, and we check for disinfection byproduct. And I, as I had alluded before, we have to sanitize the water. And as a part of that sanitizing, we do have some byproducts. So we make sure that they are um, minimized and we adjust our chemicals to make sure that we don't have uh, high residuals uh, of those. So we have TTHM and um, HAA3. Um, and don't ask me to say the, uh, the chemical name because I would probably botch them, but our water quality staff knows them very well. And um, so again, those are to make sure that all, all throughout the distribution system, uh, we have a healthy chemical balance and also sanitized water. And next. And this is a fun part, as you know, I am the face of who's presenting uh, our water quality program, but obviously the water quality program does not run by me. Uh, water quality program is run by our staff. So uh, one of the staff that does, you may see them out in the field, out and about, is doing uni unidirectional hydrant flushing. Obviously during the droughts uh, between uh, 2014 to 2017, uh, we curtailed any hydrant flushing, um, to make sure that uh, we have we are conserving water, but um, this actually photo was taken last year. Since we haven't done any hydrant flushing in a while, what happens uh, in our uh, in our water system because we're kind of at the bottom of the groundwater basin, we tend to take in a lot of sand as we're pumping. Obviously, the sand does not the sand does not get delivered to the tap. They settle out on our bottom of our pipes. So. What we do is we flush our system uh, at the hydrant to make sure that we get those sediments out and any buildup that might have been settled in our pipes. And we uh, we do have a hydrant flushing system and we let them know that sometimes uh, we get some questions about uh, why we're wasting water, but we're not really wasting water. We are actually trying to improve the water quality throughout the system. So we have a sign that talks about our water flushing program and we actually have a web page um, when we go to City of Fountain Valley water quality. So, uh, so after they actually flushed it, uh, our, call, uh, our staff uh, drank the water and they're perfectly safe. Okay, next. And uh, one other component is our backflow prevention. Uh, the photos on the left represent um, a three of our commercial center backflows. Um, and the reason why we have backflow, pro, uh, backflow program and backflow prevention is, um, so for example, if we have a high rise building or a, uh, uh, some kind of an operation where, where they might be uh, pumping water, or there's a differential in water pressure, we don't want the water flowing back into our, our main. So the backflow prevention actually stops the water from flowing back into our main. And um, the photo on the right is a different kind of a backflow prevention system. Uh, the one on the right is actually for one of our hospitals, large hospitals here, and they have a large service and it's a, com uh, it's a combination between water meter and a backflow meter or backflow uh, system. And since they are high, higher, they have multiple stories, high rise, they, there's a higher chance of uh, pressure difference between um, 
the plumbing system and our uh, main system. So this prevents that water from possibly backflowing into our, our water main. Okay, next. And uh, one of the last things that we're gonna talk about in our water system, uh, water quality is the cross connection. Uh, you know, we are very blessed um, in Fountain Valley. We are able to partner with OCWD and OC Sand District to have recycled water to provide, um, we call it a Green, green Acres uh, project that uh, we are able to bring recycled water and use that for irrigation. As you know, uh, Fountain Valley is home to the Miles Square Park. And uh, even um, the city of Fountain Valley has an 80 acre sports park facility. And we are able to irrigate 100% of our park area at the sports park with um, recycled water. And the reason why we wanna make sure that we have these signs out is uh, recycled water has a different water quality requirements and different regulatory requirements. So we wanna make sure people don't drink it. And also if um, our project or uh, someone is trying to uh, install some plumbing, say we're gonna install a uh, drinking fountain, we wanna make sure we don't tap into recycled water, but to a fresh portable water system. So these are in place to make sure that we practice um, our water quality program uh, in, a, in a manner that's, uh, protect, that protects everybody. All right, so next. And um, one of the things we don't talk about very often um, on, the, on the retail side is uh, lead and copper rule and public health goal report uh, that we are uh, supposed to uh, report every three years. So I believe this is the year that City of Fountain uh, Valley is uh, required to do lead and copper samples. And this one is different. We're not, we're not uh, sampling our own uh, public system we're actually requesting a resident to participate in, uh, in, in the water quality sample. So um, our water quality department sends out uh, some requests uh, for partnership with our residents to see if they could actually do what we call their first flush of the day uh, as they wake up and uh, put up a, I don't know how big the gallon or probably a, a maybe half gallon of water. And we collect those and we send it to the lab and check for lead and copper. And so far, uh, our system is it's clean because we know we don't have any uh, lead or copper problem in our main system. And uh, likewise, our residents do not have any uh, problem with uh, lead or copper service problem or, or sometimes the water quality uh, causes uh, leaching of copper into uh, the plumbing system, but we don't have that problem. Our water quality is uh, very neutral. It does not uh, cause other leach. It does not cause leaching of other chemicals into the uh, plumbing system. So, and those, um, all of these things, we partner uh, with OCWD and and uh, obviously Orange County Sanitation District to make sure we have our water system and our um, recycled water programs are going strong. Um, and next, okay, and next. So we have, we talked about the three prong. Uh, we have water production, water distribution, and we take uh, numerous water samples, but among all those water sample, water quality samples, we uh, check for over 7,500 separate analyte uh, reports. So among all the uh, water quality samples that Orange County Water District does, we do our own part on our own municipal system to make sure that when our customers um, turn on their tap water, it is of highest quality and is absolutely safe to drink. And um, uh, most of us here, even at City Hall, um, we actually brag that one of our uh, benefit of having here in kind of a bottom of the water uh, groundwater basin is we actually have excellent water quality. Uh, not only in quality itself, but it in taste as well. So we'd actually drink from the tap in our break room. Um, and next. And so what do we do with all these water quality samples and uh, results that we receive? So every year we prepare uh, what we call that a consumer confidence, confidence report. And that's an annual water quality report to let our uh, customers know what they're getting in their water. 
So uh, this is the latest one that we mailed out um, to our residents in probably end of June and by July, they probably well, would have received it. So that's just, that's just a cover of what we sent out. Um, and next. And this is a snapshot of the actual water quality uh, sample. And as you see, um, we had no MCL violation. And I think um, I recall one of the um, registrants actually asked us, how do you read this? It just looks like a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of acronyms. So let's kind of go over what those acronyms mean. Um, and I, I'm, I'm almost gonna show you on the next slide on how do you um, determine what the measurements are. So we talked about, you know, what are some of the measurements? So we measure water quality in some uh, analytes in parts per million. That's like a one drop uh, of one drop in a hot tub. And some analytes we actually measure for parts per billion. And that's like one drop in Olympic size swimming pool. And as uh, we just uh, finished the Olympic uh, 2020 Olympic in 2021, as you recall, looking at those uh, large Olympic size pool, that's that that's why you call it dropping a bucket, but it's this one is dropping Olympic size pool. And uh, one of the elements of concern, uh, the PFAS that um, I think Ashley and Patrick discussed, we measure that in parts per trillion. So that's like one drop in a six acre lake or someone actually made a better analogy that you could visualize is one drop in 20 Olympic size swimming pool. So as, as you can see, we take water quality very seriously. And um, after we do all of these, we report them. And uh, can we go back to the previous one? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I, I want to go over uh, how do you uh, how do you read this and what does all these um, acronyms mean? MCL means maximum contaminant level. That's what's regulated. We we absolutely have to make sure there's a there's a specific threshold number that our water quality our water quality sample cannot exceed. Then that's what MCL is. And PHG that means public health goal. That's what we strive to achieve and average local groundwater, then that's a um, that's what we find in all of our kind of an average of local groundwater. And range of detection is what they find, what we found in our water system. And, and the last, the actually second to the last column, it says MCA violation, we had none. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure this will be typical in most of your water quality report. Um, when a lot of the municipal agencies and water districts who oversee water quality, we take water quality very, very seriously. So uh, all, our, all of our staff is very committed to making sure that we comply and we work collaboratively with Orange County Water District and OC Sand District, but especially Orange County Water District, they um, actually uh, provide a water quality sample and an analysis for all our raw water. So thank you Orange County Water District for that partnership. Okay, next, and probably one more. So again, I, I think I shared with, shared with you, obviously uh, I'm the face of the one who's doing the presentation, but my water quality program is done by our staff. And I am so thankful for what they do. Um, and this one is just a photo. I actually ran into our crew out in the field and someone had run over that hydrant when they're turning the corner and I just got there and as they're resetting. So again, uh, we have our production crew um, and our distribution crew who take their job um, as a, a truly an essential service to the community to provide safe and quality drinking water. And um, I think that concludes my presentation. And I think all of us are happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Heijin, Pat, and Ashley for your presentations. Uh, really, really helpful. And uh, thank you for covering the sort of the 360 spectrum all the way from the state to the local level. So, you know, we do have a few questions that uh, we've answered kind of throughout the webinar, but we'd love to uh, have you answer some as well. So we'll dive into our Q&A. And as a reminder um, to our attendees, uh, we do have the Q&A box here. Um, we are at the top of the hour, but if, you, if you're all willing to stay on for a few minutes to get your questions answered, we're here for you. 
And um, if, if for any reason we're not able to address your question during the live portion, uh, you can always, um, we can always email your questions to our speakers and coordinate getting responses, or you can always email OCWD at info at OCWD.com and we'll, and we'll certainly get back in touch with you. Um, so, so we'll jump right into one of the first questions we, we got early on and we talked a lot about reporting um, and all the different contaminants that we, we report. Um, is there any type of real time report on, on what is in our water? And I'm not sure if that's a question perhaps for, for Ashley at the, at the state level or, or if anyone would like to give some perspective on that. So we, on the State Water Resources Control Board website, we do have um, some of the information that we get real time and that's submitted via electronically that we do post that you can go and view, and that is real-time data. Um, a lot of, like for treatment and online analyzers and stuff, we don't have a way of collecting all of that data real-time, and those are submitted in the monthly reports. And you can, if, there, if you have any concern with the water quality, there are definitely like the consumer confidence reports that get uh, submitted to consumers every single year or um, you can always work with the local district office and they'll be able to provide that data and be able to explain it to you. I'm sure the water systems, I know a lot of them will also work with you and talk you through all the data. Great, thanks, Ashley. And while, while we have you here, actually, we did have a question about uh, CLIP, uh, the CLIP program. Is, does CLIP have any way to upload the data with with flags or qualifications. Uh, it seems like maybe the old platform did not. That I don't believe CLIP does have the ability to have any flag data or qualification markers on it. Okay. Um, but that would, um, there probably more information on the, uh, clip. there's the CLIP email address that I included in the presentation. Um, which would be a good resource to use. And then there's also the link where it has all the laboratory training that was provided and they might go over that um, there too. Great, thank you, Ashley. And a reminder to our attendees, we will have the slides available after the webinar as well. So the information Ashley just referenced that we could uh, reference as well, so thank you. Um, Pat, question uh, regarding the clip. Uh, does the data from OCWD's monitoring wells uh, then get uploaded to the state's drinking water portal, which is which is currently CLIP? No, not the groundwater monitoring well data. Uh, the CLIP is only for the drinking water well data uh, for drinking water sources. Great. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, hey, Jen, um, we have a, a, an attendee interested in um, manhole covers. Uh, we sometimes see manhole covers with uh, different color triangles painted on them, like, like mm -hmm. you had in one of your slides. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on what that means? Oh, yes. I think, uh, uh, yeah, usually our water covers are blue, and uh, some of the red ones, I, you know, I think our water quality and our distribution crew will know what they are. But I think sometimes they're like end of the system or that's the one that we need to do. And they have a color coding to let them know uh, what kind of maintenance that is necessary. So, and it, it sometimes each water division uses a use of different colors. It's not a statewide uh, color coordination on uh, triangle color lids. Great, thank you. Um, how do you calculate the average pH reported in the in the letter to, to our to customers? Yeah, so that's that's probably related to the consumer confidence report. Mm -hmm. If you see, there's probably a range of pH, and we just take an average. Great, thank you, Heijin. Mm -hmm. um, Patrick, we do have a question about um, you had mentioned the GWRS and. What happens to the rest of the treated wastewater that doesn't get pumped into the GWRS? Where does that get di diverted? And, and I know the GWRS is, is under a final expansion that'll, um, that maybe you could touch on a little bit. Yes, yeah. So all the, the wastewater that's not taken by GWRS is actually sent to the Orange County Sanitation District uh, Ocean Outfall, 
which it has been sent for many years. The Unibrest system allows us to take a large portion of the wastewater from North Canada Sanitation District and that final expansion that's occurring where we will be going up to 130 MGD or million gallons per day will allow us to take more of their flows and reduce the amount of water that will be needed to go out to that ocean outfall in the future. Great, thank you, Pat. Um, we do have a question about uh, a PFOS and, and we do have a lot of information on our website as well that we could share with attendees. Um, has OCWD seen an increase in, in PFOS contamination in the monitoring wells? Well, PFOS is something that's been around for many decades. So uh, not really increases, but this just something that we are seeing that's been around for decades and we continue to monitor to assess where it may be detected throughout the groundwater basin at this point. Thank you, Pat. And again, um, OCWD uh, does have um, lots of information uh, about PFAS on the website. Uh, so I encourage all our attendees to uh, visit the website for more information. Um, a, a final question, uh, and I'd love for all of you to, to sort of touch on this as we conclude our presentation is, you know, we talk a lot about uh, testing, reporting, and uh, a lot about consumer confidence. Uh, we talked about annual water quality reports and, and CCR. Um, what can we do to improve consumer confidence in drinking water? What, what else can we do or, or how do we increase public awareness of drinking water? I'll go first then. Um, I think it's uh, important for uh, even our own residents and our maybe uh, uh, people that are in the in our circle uh, and our even elected officials. Maybe we could we could talk about what we do to get the water to our customers. Look at all the water quality samples we take. Look at what kind of reporting we do. Um, so that's that's the portable water that they get from the tap. But uh, I think like bottled water that people purchase in fancy bottles. I don't think they have this kind of regulatory uh, compliance requirements like we do here. So I think for me, uh, probably the drinking water from the tap is probably much more regulated than water that they get from plastic bottles. Thank you, Heijin. Pat or Ashley, any, any kind of final comments or thoughts on that? you'd like to share with our group? But I guess opportunities like this where we're having with these webinars is an excellent opportunity to provide some of the information on all the water quality testing and really what goes into you being able to turn on your tap and have drinking water come out. Um, so I think those are great opportunities. I know trying to be for the state water board, we try and be as transparent with the data that we receive as possible and to share that and to provide new and interesting formats and posting that information. So different graphics and um, using different methods to kind of make it, I guess, more easy to understand if you're not in the water industry. And so those are some of the things that we're also trying to do to help everyone um, have a better understanding because it is incredibly important that I think people understand the amount of work and effort that goes into having safe drinking water at your top. Thank you, Ashley. Um, Pat, any final comments from you? No, I would definitely agree with uh, Ashley and hey, Jen. Uh, just the amount and effort on both the federal, state, regional, and local levels to protect water quality and to better understand water quality are great. And understanding all the efforts and information that's being presented out there is definitely uh, can be difficult for the general public, but that's what efforts like this, like this webinar, are trying to accomplish to better provide better information to the public. So I think that's the best effort. Perfect. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. And I just want to extend a, a huge thank you to all our speakers and all our attendees for joining us today. Uh, we hope you found the webinar helpful and hope you enjoyed it. Um, I do want to remind everyone that our webinar uh, you know, is recorded and it will be posted on the OCWD website and YouTube channel. 
Um, and so we encourage you to, to visit that and uh, follow up with us if you have any other questions and stay in touch with us. And again, happy National Water Quality Month to everyone. Thank you and have a great day.